Inclusion Summit 2016. How's everyone doing? My name is Haven, and the name Haven comes from Eritrea, a small African country. When my grandmother tried to take my older brother to school, they told her deaf-blind children can't go to school. She took him to the Eritrean school for the blind, and they said, sorry, he's deaf. We can't teach deaf kids. She next went to the Eritrean school for the deaf, and they said, sorry, he's blind. We don't teach blind kids. My family then moved to the United States, and I was born also deaf-blind. We discovered communities that value diversity and inclusion. The teachers at the school said, we don't have all the answers, but let's try. Let's strive for innovation, inclusion, and that's how it should be. In 2010, I entered Harvard Law School as their first deaf-blind student. <laughs> Harvard told me We've never had a deaf-blind student before. And I told them, I've never been to Harvard Law School before. <laughs> it's important to know that Harvard has changed throughout its history. Helen Keller was a brilliant, amazing deaf-blind woman who lived from 1880 to 1968. She advocated for civil rights, women's rights, disability rights. Harvard wouldn't admit Helen, because back then, Harvard was only for men. Helen's disability didn't hold her back. Her gender didn't hold her back. It was the community at Harvard that practiced exclusion. We've come a long way since Helen's time. More and more communities celebrate diversity and inclusion. Harvard eventually made the smart decision to open its doors to women, people of color, and people with disabilities. For my grandmother back in Eritrea, my success at Harvard seemed superhuman, inspirational. And I told her, no, it's not me. It's Harvard that changed. And all of us have the power to change our communities. Inspirational is a word that puts someone on a pedestal and it others them. It separates them from us. So I don't like the word inspirational because it creates divides and separates people. We're all connected. We're all united. I do like inspiration as a verb. I'm inspired to change a school. I'm inspired to build accessible technology. So when you talk about our stories, the experience of being disabled, think about the words you use and what they mean. What are you communicating to people? I've learned from my education that we have the power to shape our stories. Other people tell stories about what it means to be disabled, the daughter of immigrants, but I choose what it means to be deafblind for me, what it means to be disabled for me. And the word disability, that's a word tied to civil rights. The Americans with Disabilities Act, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So the word disability for me is powerful because it's connected to civil rights. All of you have your own cultures and languages and stories, and you choose your stories. You choose your futures. Inclusion starts with the community. I want to share a photo that is an example of what inclusion looks like. The, sh the photo shows President Obama standing at a table, and I'm also standing on the other side of the table. President Obama is typing on a keyboard, and I'm reading what he's saying on a digital braille display. Digital dots are popping up, and by running my fingers over them, 
I'm able to read what someone is writing. President Obama usually communicates by voice. That's what he's most comfortable with. And that's what most people are most comfortable with. And when, connect, when he wanted to share an idea with me, he had to make a choice. Is he going to be inclusive and adapt to my method of communication? Or is he going to be exclusionary and say, this is different. This is weird. I'm not getting involved. He chose to be inclusive. He typed and was able to share a message with me. Some of my friends asked me, OK, so you met him. But what did you talk about? You both went to Harvard Law School. Did you guys talk about Harvard? And I told her, President Obama has met lots of people who've gone to Harvard. That's not special for him. I wanted to be different. I wanted to stand out, because difference is an asset. So instead of talking about Harvard, I teased him about his typing. President Obama types with two fingers. And I, I expressed surprise that the leader of the first world was typing with two fingers. But we made it work. I'm able to accommodate everyone and their abilities. And that's what inclusion looks like. Two people working out whatever their abilities are to find a way to communicate. That might mean slowing down, accommodating each other's pace. But that's how it works. And that's what inclusion looks like. We also have a video that shows sign language. And sign language is another form of communication. When deaf individuals sign, we're able to see or feel the communication. I'm blind, so I need someone to sign into my hand. And when I feel what they're signing, I'm able to understand and respond back. Deaf communities all over the world have developed their own sign languages. In India, there are many different sign languages. In the United States, there are many different sign languages. These are t communication tools designed and developed by deaf people for deaf people. Because being different drives innovation. Another form of communication is dance. Dance is a series of signals that, that communities have developed. Salsa is one form of communication. Some dancers who are blind hear the music and respond to what they're hearing in the music. Some dancers who are deaf watch the other dancers and see the beat through their eyes or by watching the fingers of the, of the musicians and seeing the beat in the musicians. For me, I'm deaf blind and I feel the music through the people I dance with. There are some signals in salsa that are visual, that I can't see, and the people I dance with make a choice. They choose to be inclusive, and they'll communicate those visual signals as tactile signals, so we can share a song, a dance, and celebrate the joy of community. I also have for you a photo of a jungle gym. A jungle gym? It's a tall structure. This one is rope-based, pyramid-shaped. It's in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. And I'm climbing it. The thing about jungle gyms is that there are multiple different paths to get to the top. There isn't a right or wrong path. You can choose your own path. If you can't see, you can climb by touch. You can climb by sound. Having someone describe and offer visual variation descriptions as you climb. If you have a physical mobility disability, you can build an assistive climbing device that will assist you in taking your path and reaching your career goals and, and future plans. 
Exploration leads to innovation. People with disabilities spend years, some of us all our lives, finding new ways to do things. And that's an asset that builds problem-solving skills, analytical skills. Organizations that choose to be inclusive and hire people with disabilities benefit by having more talent because you get these years of experience with problem solving. Many of the innovations we have today, from keyboards to email, have been inspired by disability. I'll give two examples. In 1808, two friends in Italy wanted to be able to send each other letters. One is blind, one is sighted. And back then, most people write letters by sight. Some blind people would read their letter out loud while someone else writes the letter for them. But they couldn't do that here. They had to keep their letters secret. They were love letters. So they thought about what can they do? How can they innovate a solution where they can produce print, write letters, without using sight. And they developed one of the first working typewriters. The inventor's name was Turi. And now, many years later, many people around the world use keyboards to produce print. And some of the fastest letter writers are touch typists using their hands to produce print. Difference, disability, is an opportunity to create new devices that benefit not just people with disability, but the greater community. Another example is email. Vinton Cerf is one of the fathers of the internet. And before the internet existed as we know it today, he wanted a solution for communicating long distance that doesn't require hearing. He's deaf and his wife is deaf, and telephones weren't really a feasible solution. They discovered that sending digital messages back and forth, electronic mail, was a great way to communicate. So he helped develop one of the earliest email protocols. Now lots of people use email, and we didn't know about email 40 years ago. But disability helped create a tool that many of us use today. Disability is an asset. Difference is an asset. And when we celebrate the ways in which we stand out, we benefit our communities. And it's up to communities to choose to be inclusive. Technology is a huge area where we have the potential to create more inclusion. There are several things you need to keep in mind when designing accessible products and services. One thing is screen reader compatibility. Blind individuals need software, applications, websites to be compatible with screen readers. And I have a short video to share that shows how screen readers work. A screen reader is a program that converts graphical information to speech or digital braille. The screen reader on the iPhone is called VoiceOver. VoiceOver also works on the Mac, iPad, and the Apple Watch. So when I'm using my phone, I use VoiceOver. VoiceOver can speak out loud and send information to the digital braille display. News. Checking for new news. National Geographic, unread. World's largest rodents on lamb from Toronto Zoo. I'm panning right on the braille display using the advanced forward button. If I wanted to instead use hand gestures on the iPhone, I could flick right with one finger. To open an item, I can double tap anywhere on the screen. Text size, caption, title, with title, world's large title. After escaping from the High Park Zoo in Canada, two capybaras have eluded capture for by Jason Biddle. Published June 9. Most people do their best to avoid rodents of unusual size. But after a pair of capybaras escaped from Toronto's High Park Zoo on May 12, alert. Gordon. 
Hi, I'm at the door sushi. Pot of food. Fish cake with swirl design. <laughs> My friend's at the door, so I'm just gonna let him know. Close. Button. Reply. Button. Messages notification. Hang. In. There. I'm. Almost. Done. With. This. Demo. Send. Button. VoiceOver has allowed me to access more information, news, mail, and messages. And it's also a way for me to know when friends are at the door. Thanks for watching. Bye. So accessibility features like screen readers benefits the disability community and benefits the greater community. It brings more revenue. There are one billion people with disabilities all over the world. That's a huge market. So when you design with accessibility in mind, you get more customers, you increase more revenue, and you drive future innovation. So when you're building accessible products, think about screen reader compatibility, captioning on videos so that deaf individuals can access videos, support for assistive devices, and keep innovating. This is just the beginning. There are more products and more accessibility features to come up ahead. So we're about to transition, but I wanted to ask everyone for a huge favor. Social media is a great way to share stories, and I want to share with my friends and followers that I'm here with you at the India Inclusion Summit. So we're going to do a quick selfie that I'm going to post on social media with everyone here. So stay in your seats. Ariane and a photographer will come up on stage, and we'll do a cute, quick selfie and then transition to Q&A. I'm going to ask everyone to do the I love you sign in American Sign Language. It looks like this. Your pinky finger, index finger, and thumb sticking out. I-L-Y. It's the I love you sign in American Sign Language. So if everyone could do this, or smile, or whatever you'd like, that'd be great. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so, you know, I met Habin, I think six or seven months back um, in San Francisco when one of my common friends introduced both of us. And um, I wanted to go and meet her in San Francisco. So me and Shikha, Shikha is here, uh, we both decided to go uh, and meet Habin and I was completely confused. How do I interact with her? Because uh, I didn't know what deaf-blind men, um, and so I, I went to San Francisco, we decided on a mutual restaurant where we will have a coffee together, um, and there it was, Haben was there, and I was, I was trying to be very conscious of, I hope it's the right place, it's comfortable for her, and then of course I met her and she gave me such a wonderful hug, and she had a pet dog with her, um, who's a service dog, a wonderful uh, pet, who takes care of her all the time. She's completely independent. She can go on the tram. She crosses the road because the, the service dog knows when it's red, when it's green, when it's yellow. Uh, completely independent, um, goes in the metro. 
she's just fun. And of course, uh, my mission in Bangalore is to go out on a dance, a salsa dance with her. So I hope I'll be able to fulfill that. She's a fantastic dancer. So I've been, I hope I can go on a dance with her. Um, but we had an incredible conversation, an incredible conversation. Uh, and I always thought at that moment I told Shikha that, you know, we need to get someone like her to, to the India Inclusion Summit. She's been incredibly supportive, uh, and here she is with us. I just want all of you to give a big round of applause to Harbin and Arya. And let me share my confusion, because when I landed in that restaurant, I didn't know what, how to have a conversation. I was like, how do I talk to her? And then she immediately gave me her small, you know, pad, and he said, Feroz, keep typing in. So I started typing in. So let me share what, let me show you how it happens. So Habin, how, this has been your first visit to India. How has your experience been? This is my first trip to India, and it's been fantastic. I love the food here. I want to go out for a salsa dance with you. Would tomorrow evening, 7 p.m. work for you? I'm down. Who else wants to join us? Haben, <laughs> that's not fair, okay? I wanted to go with you alone. Now you have called the whole 800 people in this room. Feroz, get in line. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it once again for the incredible Harbin Girma and his dear friend, Ariana. Thank you so much. And we want to do something incredibly special. We want to do something absolutely special. Uh, we want to release a Braille lifestyle magazine. I want to call on Upasana, who's done an incredible work. This is a special India Inclusion Summit. Braille magazine that we would want Harbin to release for all of us here. And we have the founder, the editor of this lifestyle magazine here with us, Upasna. She's a fantastic lady. Thank you so much for doing this special edition for us. We'll have Harbin release the special edition of White Print. This is the Lifestyle Magazine in Braille and this is a complete special edition on the India Inclusion Summit and I would like Harbin to release this for all of us officially. Yeah, she should just hold it. Let's hear not just for Harbin but also for this wonderful lady Upasana.